Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'll be doing question three of May, June, 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 June question three of mathematics paper one. And these are uh, sequences. Uh, this is a quadratic sequence specifically that we're doing now. So I'll read question three statement and then proceed to answer the questions that follow. So question three. Uh, okay, actually, you must not forget I have a special guest here that I'll be doing this problem to. So we'll get started. Question three. A quadratic sequence has the following properties. So you are told that you have a quadratic sequence which has the following properties. One, the first property is that the second difference is 10. So you know, what do you know about the second difference of the quadratic sequence? Um, it holds two decimals to eight. So you have the second common difference. It's common, it's constant. It does not change. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So now, also, you are told that the first two terms are equal, which is term one and term two of your sequence are equal. Do you understand? And the third property, you are told that the sum of the first three terms, which is term one, term two, and term three of your quadratic sequence is equal to 28. So they are saying that show that the general term of the sequence is this here, 5n squared minus 15n plus 16. So they wanted to use these properties that were given, these three properties that were given, to show that the general sequence, general, uh, general part, general term of the quadratic sequence is this one. So you know, in the quadratic sequence, what is the general term? So n is equal to? A n squared. A n squared. Plus B. Plus B n. Plus C. Plus C. So the general term for a quadratic package should be in this form. Right? So the first thing that you need to find is what? Is A. You know that A, 2, a, two times A is equal to the common difference. Right? I clear with that. Yes. So now, you are given the common difference, which is the second difference, which is what? Ten. Which means 2 times A is equal to what? 10. Then divide by 2, divide by 2. What is the value of A? 5. A is equal to 5. Which means you have this part now. You can write your general term and say now, my Tn is equal to 5n squared plus Bn plus C. Are you happy at this point? Yes. Because you have found your A. Now we're missing B and C. Let's go to the next property. On the next property, they told you that uh, the first two terms of the sequence are what? Are equal. Uh, is that clear? Yes. They're telling you that the first two terms of the sequence are equal. So what do you say? You say, okay. My, my Tn is equal to 5n squared plus Bn plus C. Do you agree with that? Yes. So, we can find the first term of the sequence. T1. What is it equal to? T1 is equal to what? 5 times 1 plus B is 1 plus C. So, what do we say? We say, okay. T1 is equal to what? 5 plus what? Plus B plus C. This is your what? T1. This is your T1. Can you find T2? Yes. You can find T2 as well. T2 is equal to 5 times 2 all squared, right? Yes. Plus B into 2 plus C. So T2 is equal to what? Um, this is 5 times 4. This is like, looks like 20. Plus 2b plus c. c. What were you told about term 1 and term 2? They're equal. They're equal. So you can equate these two things. So you are told that the second property was telling you that the first two terms are equal. Which means the term 1 is equal to what? The term 2. What does that mean? It means that your five. 5 plus B plus C is equal to 20 plus 2B plus C. You can see that this end up go away. Right? Yes. This comes to this side. Your 5 minus 20 is equal to 2B minus B. 
So we have minus 15 is equal to B. Done. What are you missing? C. C. Then how do you find C? Take this B of yours. Subject to any of these two equations. Either the first one or the second one. Next one. Ah, uh, wait, wait, wait. You have B to be this thing here. Mm. You're missing what? C. Uh, you're missing C, you're missing C, you're missing C. Okay, so your equation, sorry. Your equation is what? Tn is equal to 5n squared, right? Yes. Minus 15n plus C. C. What is that you are missing? You are missing C, C, which is that. So you found your B to be that. Go to the next property. What did they tell you? P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P28. Term, if you add the first three terms, they give you what? 28. 28. Okay. So now, we know what the first term is. So we can find the te term number one by saying T1 is equal to what? Which is equal to 5 to 1 all squared minus 15 into 1 plus C. Right? So T1 is equal to what? 5 minus this is minus 10. Do we agree? Yes. And also, minus 10 plus C, sorry. Minus 10 plus C, which is that C there. I'll say this is the same as term, term number 2, because the first two terms are equal. Pushing the set, the first term, the first term is minus 10, which is this. You punch this, should be minus 10. Is it? Plus C, which is this. This is the first term. It's also the same as the what? As the second term. Because you're told that these two are equal. Then let's go to the third one. T3 is equal to what? So it's equal to 5 into 3 squared minus 15 into 3 plus C. So the T3 is equal to what is this? So looks like. It's zero. Sorry? It's zero. Zero. So this is C. So you're left with what? With C. So when you say this time that and that, it's zero. Yes. Okay, no problem. So your term three is equal to C. But you're told that if you add term number one and term number two and term number three, it should give you what? You have eight. What is term number one? Yes. Term number one is minus 10 plus C. So you have minus 10 plus C. What is term number two? Minus, minus 10, 10 plus, plus C. C. What is term number three? C. C is equal to? 28. 28. So this and this is minus 20 plus? plus it's plus 2. Negative 10. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. C plus C plus C, 3C is equal to 28. Eight. Then you have 3C is equal to 28 plus 20, which is equal to 48. Then you divide by 3. So your C is equal to what? 16. C is equal to 16. So that means your, therefore your Tn is equal to what? Uh, 5n squared minus 15n 15 plus 16. Is that our answer? Yes. This is what we're trying to prove. Then you have found your value of C. And you are done with this question. 2.3.1. Then you're going to 3.2 now. I don't think I have enough space. But I'll try to fit it there. 3.2. 3.2 is as follows. Is the term 216 in this sequence? So we, they're asking, is 216 a term on this sequence? Is it a list on this sequence? Is it, does, does it fall on this sequence? Do you understand? They're saying justify your answer with necessary calculations. So we want to see if this is in the sequence. How do we do that? We want, we want, we want, if, we want to, if, if it is in this sequence, right? When we equate it, 
to our general sequence Tn. It should give us the position where it where this thing is. Do you understand? Yes. So we're saying now, sequence. We we we're assuming that this thing is inside this sequence. This two one six is inside the sequence. So where is it really? Its position. We are trying to locate its position. So what do we do? We say okay now. 216 is equal to Tn, right? Yes. Which is equal to 5n squared minus 15n plus 16. So now, if this thing gives us a positive, if a solution to this equation gives us a positive, gives us a natural number, right? Which means it is in the sequence. And that natural number that we'll be getting is the position of this term in this sequence. But if not, then this sequence is not here. This term is not part of this sequence. It's not inside the sequence. So what do we do? We say, okay, it's 5n squared. We transpose this to the other side. Minus 15n minus 200, right? Yes. Is equal to zero. Then we put this in our quadratic formula. n is equal to negative b, which is negative 15, plus or minus of what? Negative 15 all squared, squared minus 4 into this c which is minus 200 all divided by 2 times 5. What are the n values? 8. Then call 8. Minus. Minus? 5. So which one is correct? 8. 8. So it's, it's our integer. So this 216, this 10 216 is in our sequence and it's on the eighth position, it's the eighth term of our sequence. And you're done with this question, question three. We hope you found this question helpful. Now we'll move to the next question, which is question five.